This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're happy to be here. It's a Monday. It's a beautiful day. I'm Jay Fidel. I'm happy in my skin. Okay, this is Lori McCartney. She, and McCartney, and she's happy in her skin, too. Very happy in my skin. Yeah. She's the CEO of Bike Share Hawaii, which is a very important organization, an organization dedicated to sort of remaking our city and ultimately our state. And um, it's done amazing things. It opened in July, July 1, I want to say. Yeah. And you, as a, an executive decision, you put all the bikes out there. Everywhere you deployed them everywhere, and, and you know you can hardly miss them now uh, in the Hawaii in the Honolulu landscape. So, how has it been, Lori, since then? Well, since we launched on June twenty eighth, just two days before the Fourth of July, uh, July um, it's been going really well. You know, uh, as we were planning for this, it took us almost five years to get here. I've been involved in it for three years, so there were a lot of things that we did to try to make sure that once we got there, it was going to work. And, uh, but still, you put it out, you put them out and you go, is anybody going to ride them? Are they going to be used? Uh, and um, really, really pleased to see Honolulu take up and adopt Beaky as a way to get around, a way to, you know, have some fun and a way to get exercise. Yeah. And when we met, I mean, we met here yes. at, this, at this table, you yes. and me like this. I was so impressed with the fact that it was like skiing. You know, you see the hill in front of you, you know the risks, and you go. Yeah. You go right down that yeah. hill, and you do it, and you find that you were right, your, intu your executive intuition was right, and people come from near and far to ride those blue bikes, no? It's really great, and it's not just me. There's so many people that were involved in this, and uh, the process was not easy, but it was, a, it was a, for a good reason. You know, in Honolulu, we have... You know, I drive a car, I like to drive, you know, I'm not like only ride a bike type of person. Um, but I think in Honolulu we have the opportunity to get around different ways and we yeah. need more choices. Yeah. And um, I would spend a lot of time in San Francisco, for example. I lived there for almost 20 years and I know going to work I could walk, I could take a taxi, I could take a cable car, I could take a bus, I could take um, uh, transit. I, could, I had all these it's options, with options, options <laughs> you know, and I came here and it's like, okay, what are my, my options were limited. So this provides another option for folks. Yeah. Yeah. And you do ride a bike. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I ride, I ride bikes a lot. Um, I ride Beaky almost entirely, and my business day is Beaky. Yeah, no um, discount. I like that part. No discount. My belief has always been in any job I've been in is to be a consumer, be a user of the system, experience everything that everybody else experiences. And so I get overage charges. <laughs> I'm on the $15 a month uh, plan, which is a very popular plan, although our most popular plan is the free spirit. Um, then I get to see how that works. Why did I get an overage? Oh, well, you know, my ride was over 30 minutes. And my rides are almost always 12 minutes, but sometimes I get excited and start doing, <laughs> um, okay. yeah. And I, I call the call center. If something goes on, I call them to see what's going on. I think it's really important when you do something to really live in it and be part yeah, of it. Sure. Because then you can make it better. That's where you find out. It's yes. like that TV show about the boss. You know, oh, the, undercover boss. Undercover yeah, boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm out of cover boss. <laughs> out of I'm cover. out there. <laughs> Hi, this is Lori. There. What's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are the plans? I mean, I'd like to know because that $15 plan sounds really good for somebody who just wants to get around point to point around the city. It is a really good plan. Um, the good thing about it is if you look at our average ride times, it's uh, average is 20 minutes for each trip from, from one station to another station. Um, but the, it's higher for visitors because um, they're not really so destination focused maybe. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then uh, for residents, it's just around 12 minutes. So 30 minutes is plenty of time to get in between. You know, if, so, so for me, I ride two to six to eight times a day on Beaky. Um, but my cost is always $15, except, like I said, for that time when I... That's $15 for a whole $15 month. For a, day. for a whole month. $15 for the month? Right, for Whoa. a month. So you can go a lot of places if you if you stay within that. Yes. For no more than $15. $15. And even when I go over and I get a three fifty dollars charge because I've gone over, it's like it was still $18. Is that right? Eighteen fifty for a whole month. Yeah. So what we're seeing people do is um, they start with our free spirit pass. Which a is, lot of them, which, which is twenty dollars 
for 300 minutes of writing time, which is five hours, that you use in any increments you want. Per so if I per day. No, forever. The minutes never expire. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's so what's cool about it. It's way. like I have a bank of minutes. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then I, every time I ride, I subtract from the 300 minutes, okay. however minutes I however many minutes Six I use. Hours. Five. Yeah. Five hours. That's a lot. Yeah. So um, it's funny at home. My husband has the free spirit plan, and I have the fifteen dollar <laughs> plan, and we're trying to decide which one's the best value. <laughs> They're both because he's like, okay, if I calculate each of my trips are eight minutes to go back and forth where I go. I think free spirit plan might be better value. Yeah, and I'm yeah. thinking, no, no, I want the flexibility. It's really interesting. Yeah. So they're both great values. Yeah. And um, we see people start with a free spirit because then they're not sure what their right patterns are going to be. And then we've seen the $15 and $25 monthly pass, which I could talk about, yeah. become more popular as people look at their history, which they can do on the website, yeah. and see oh, all my trips are 12 minutes and I ride a lot, maybe the $15 monthly plan's better. I'm, I'm reminded of Verizon, you know, my yep. phone and all. Yeah. Where, where if you call them, they'll tell you, well, you know, your average minutes is this yep. and that, you're in the wrong plan, yep. why don't you shift plans? Yes. You could do software like that, couldn't you? Yes, we could, and we do actually call people and ask them and look at it. You know, we don't want to be too invasive, right. uh, and people have different reasons for doing different things, and we're brand new still. Yeah. Um, but we do see people naturally doing that and we do have that suggestion for yeah. people. So what about the $25? So 25 is just like the 15 and you probably will never have an overage charge because it's unlimited 60 minute rides. So I could ride a gazillion times every day in a month as long as every trip was under 60 minutes it would still be $25. Mm -hmm. So uh, one practical problem, yes. you know, I, I have to admit yeah. that I haven't, I haven't actually taken a I'm going to take you out. I, I, I told you though, in my youth, I was, I was, I rode everywhere, right. rode to work every day for yeah. years and years, and I raced, and I, and I raced up on Tantalus where they yep. had that drag racing yeah. thing, and I, and I, I went uh, up there every, every, every Thursday morning. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of us would go yep. up, top and bottom. Right. And I went around um, you know, Waimanalo side. Yeah. Um, you know, once a week also. Yeah. Anyway, that's my riding. But query now, so right outside our door here at Pioneer Plaza, there's a beaky stand. Yep. Okay. So I get in the beaky. I got to, what, put my card in? I yes. I got to register there. Yep. Um, I take the beaky. I take the beaky down to, I don't know, university. Yeah, know. okay. Um, how, how do I know where the next beaky stand is? Because i got to put the bike back. Right. How do I know where that is? Well, we've got something for you. <laughs> okay, all right. We, got we have an app. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have a beaky app, actually, that's available on iPhone and Android. Uh -huh. And uh, the app has great features, but I think the one that people use most is where is the next beaky stop? Because it's GPS enabled. GPS, so you can see, okay. your out, you can yeah. see yourself and you can see the beaky stops. But it also shows you what the availability of bikes and docks is. So if you're if you're riding along and you're wondering is there going to be a place for me to put right. my bike, Gotta you have can a place. see. Yeah. You can see. Or is there a bike there? You can see those things. And that's probably the main feature that people use the app for. That's really important. Yeah, it's really important. And I think um, it's uh, one of the things that we don't want people to run in is to those situations, right? Because I thought I was saving time, and then if I can't dock my bike and put it, you know, put yeah, it into a station, then place. you know, then it screws up their uh, what they're trying to do. Yeah. So um, that's one of the reasons we have the app, and that's also the reason that we have stations close together. I'm always asked, there's a station here, and I can see the next one. And that's absolutely right. And the idea then in those situations, especially in areas where we have a lot of activity, is making that so if you do come into a situation that we haven't been able to get the station set, yeah. then there's one so close by that you think, okay, that's acceptable. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's really important. It's really important. Because it's like, may I say, taking an Uber. You take it for short trips, go where you want, stop, right. you know, and then you're unencumbered, and then you decide to come back. It's so easy to do that. Yeah, from wherever you are, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we do have a relationship with Lyft, by the way. Um, and in that sense, we know a lot of people like to take Beaky for Palhana, yeah. uh, and we don't encourage people to um, have a few, cock you know, to overdo it and then use Beaky. Yeah. And so that's why we have this, um, we suggest that people Beaky one way and if they feel that it's not really, they're not sure. in the capacity to, to bike, then to take Lyft home. So what, what does that mean? Is there, is there, is there a special price, special 
program with Lyft? Yeah, so they will have different um, offer codes that will go along with some of the things that we're supporting. So always look if we're going to be in an event like that, that you often will see a Lyft code. Um, for that event, yeah. and then also if you're not a Lyft user, then there's a special sign-up um, uh, that rewards Beaky and you for being a Beaky user. <laughs> it's, you know, it's all about options, right? Yeah, it really is. So it is remaking the city. Um, so I want to also track on, um, you know, how it's been since, what, June 28th? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You have more bikes now. Uh, what's your ridership? What's what's the, um, you know, the, the, the sea change in your ridership? Right. Really interesting at the beginning, um, I think like with anything in Hawaii, it starts really strong. And I was right. I was worried Early that it was going to drop. Are. You know, I was really more concerned about that. What yeah. happens? Is it just going to be a new thing? I'll go ride it once and go away. Yeah. Um, but actually, our ridership has stayed really steady and strong, uh, around 60,000 trips every month. And so 2,000 to 2,100. Um, what we see when rider, low ridership days are, guess what, when it's raining and pouring outside. Yeah, People say, there. you know, I think I'll choose something else. Yeah. Um, we had a really, really rainy day the day after Christmas. It was one of those where it was flash flood warnings on your TV all the time. And um, that one, we had only 500 trips that day. And uh, I did have to admit, I go on it because I can see sort of what's going on. And it's yeah. like, oh, there's people out riding right now. Yeah. And I look outside and I go, wow, these guys are that's dedicated. Good for them. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, so that was, that's our low days. Um, we haven't been through a full year, so we don't know what seasonality looks like yeah, yet. Right. So we don't know. Um, bad weather should lower trips. Shorter days, I thought, might lower trips. But we don't know if cooler weather makes more rides. Uh, so far, January is higher ridership than we've seen. Isn't that at interesting? All. interesting? Yeah, so it's like, why? Um, we don't know for sure. What about the tourists? I mean, when it started, my impression, it's anecdotal only, was that tourists were really interested. Yeah. They, they had no fear. Mm -hmm. um, they were interested in exploring. Right. It's a great way for them to explore. Yeah. How has that uh, changed? So the, the visitor side has stayed pretty much the same. Yeah. And, and what we have to remember is that most visitors have bike share where they are. <laughs> Ah, sure. <laughs> right, so I think, um, so for them to come here, I think a lot before was what I was hearing was, there's no bike share in Honolulu, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> because the they want to be the out, world. they want to be outside and they, you know, they were the ones that get all the convertibles, you know, from the rental car yeah, companies, sure, right, right? right? We don't, but, <laughs> um, so they want to be outside. So I think they come in actually knowing more about it than a lot of our residents do. So anyway, that's holding pretty steady, um, but we're, we talk with the visitor industry and, how can we help enhance the visitor experience and all of that? Um, so that's good. Um, so we see them continuing to use it. I do know a lot of people think that a lot of residents are visitors because I get asked that all the time when I'm out on the weekend or something. They'll ask me, where are you from? <laughs> it's like, here. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, I'm wearing shorts. And, yeah, I look like a visitor. <laughs> How about, so I guess then, but most of your growth would be what, in local people? Yeah, well, you know, 65% um, of our rides, we just did, over the end of the year, we just released our six-month statistics. And 65% um, of the trips made on Beaky are by residents. And the only real way that we know that is what zip code do they associate? Sure, sure. So by zip code, that's what we see. And also we see that our highest zip code of use is Waikiki. So that's not visitors. You know, because they wouldn't be putting in, they wouldn't know it's 96815. They wouldn't have no idea. They yeah. wouldn't know. Yeah. So it's uh, the people, uh, and I can relate to this from my son, not the Waikiki part, but the resident part of being sort of like in that area is he was working at a restaurant and then he had to close up. And so he would not be done until after 12, midnight. And so he would take Peaky home. And so I think we have a lot of service workers and a lot of people who work in the visitor industry or live in Waikiki that use Peaky. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. Um, we're going to take a break, Lori. When we come back, I would like to talk about the technology you started with and the technology you are evolving to. Great. Uh, I love the GPS idea, but there must be more. Yeah. That's Lori McCartney. She's the CEO of Bike Share Hawaii. We'll be right back. Hey, aloha. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. 
Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We are back. We're live. We're having such a good time with Lori McCartney, and she is the CEO of Bike Share, which is so wholesome and healthy and good for us, good for all of us, even if we don't ride bikes, because it's remaking our city, you know? So the first thing I want to talk about, now that we're back from the break, is the GPS technology you talked about. That sounds great. What else is in the app? What else is in the... Oh, and you talked about how there's a control kind of thing where you can look at a screen in a remote location and see who's out there and you know get demographics right. on them very important for planning what else yeah well you know uh, one of the things i think people should know is that we're watching the system all the time okay so we know the status of every station um, we know if there's something going on with the technology um, you know that this, the kiosks in the stations are solar powered Yes. And so in that sense, then that's, that's the solar, yeah, the solar feeds a bat, uh, keeps the battery charged, but yeah. we have some batteries that have to be changed more often. If you notice a beaky stop that's under trees, um, then, you know, it, it needs to be changed solar, out more the often. Nature of solar. Yeah, so we watch those, and then we watch the technology, because the, there's communication. So the technology feeds the communication. So you're on the, the internet, you're on wireless. And yeah, so that. it's running through cell. Um, so uh, I don't know if people remember when there was a fire underneath that viaduct that burnt out a lot of the, uh, the internet connections. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our main carriers was pretty much disabled for that whole day. All oh. of our system went down. Oh, no. And so we couldn't do anything. I mean, if we couldn't communicate through the cell service, uh, the stations that were with that particular carrier couldn't function. So our call center then was knew which stations we encourage people to call the call center, and then the call center will work with, where are you, where are you trying to go? Well, this station works. It was a pretty uh, interesting day, but yeah, we tried yeah. to do our best. Yeah, yeah. But the technology on the back end helps us also keep track of how many trips in this area, you know, what time of day, you know, how many ins and outs. So we can get an idea of where demand is and where we need more, you know, how, how long was that station empty yeah. or full? Yeah. You know, so and adjust the whole system. Trying to, yeah, so after six months, we're doing some things a little bit differently in, uh, af after this first learning and we'll continue to evolve to do it's that. It's like ABC stores. Yeah. If something sells, there's more of it. If something yeah. doesn't sell, it's not on the show. Yeah. So you're always adapting. Yeah. yeah, this density of network is probably the thing that's hardest for me to explain to people about why we need so many. Because um, our priority is if we, we want to, we have to have the density to make it work. So that means we have to have enough stations for that area. Yeah. And um, that's where conflict will come in. Our first choice is always a wide sidewalk. Then nobody, he's not bothering anybody, right? <laughs> there's plenty of room to walk. Yeah. Not and then the second place can't is can't always have that. Though. It can't always have that, yeah. and but you have to have enough density to make it work. Yeah. And so then the second place is uh, restricted parking. That's where it says no parking. Well, one of the things we found out was some people park there anyway. Yeah. And if you put a beaky stop there, then it disturbs then you're those areas. The bikes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and then our third choice is parking. Um, but what we have seen because we have seen it used so much is. If we have in a two parking spot space, um, instead of two cars, in a lot of neighborhoods, you'll notice that people just sort of commandeer those spots. <laughs> you yes. park, and I'm not moving my car because I'm yeah. not going to get a space again. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of that staying for one or two cars over a period of time, we, you see all of these bikes going in and out. And that means that we're improving the mobility for people. Yes, you are. And that's, that's what's helping. So it's an interesting uh, conversation. So giving this, um, you know, the information you get yeah. and, then, and your analysis of your analytics, if right. I can use it. Um, so you've made changes. Have you, uh, I, and I assume you've moved locations because of that? Uh, have you increased the number of locations? Have you increased the number of bicycles? So uh, we have only moved one station. And... This is where the public-private nonprofit partnership comes in. Uh -huh. uh, so, as a nonprofit that manages Bike Share, that manages Beaky, and is the public face and the interface with the city and everything, and manages the operator, 
um, we're not just where we make money, right? We need to serve the community. Yes. And so from that sense, out of 100 stations, there's some that don't perform as well as others. Yes. But they're serving a important community. It's an interesting kind of it's, dilemma then. Yeah, so it's sort of like, um, so we try to balance it. Yeah. I think it's like any business. There's the 80-20 rule, right? Yeah, yeah. There's always the 80%, 20% of the people make the money for the 80, other 80%. <laughs> and that's, in any industry I've ever been in, that's been the case. Yeah. So we're not 80-20. But we're, you know, we're, we're trying to keep that balance. And I think that's, that's healthy. So if, if your demographics show um, that you need another station in, in another location, or you need to buy X number of bikes in order to meet your model, you know, however, mm -hmm. you, however yeah. you, you know, fashion that model, um, where do you get the funding from? Do you have to go out to the public? Um, the, uh, who, who would provide the additional capital? Yeah, so we're in a new stage now. So I was able to go find, our operator actually financed the equipment for this first phase um, because much, many people think that this was all publicly funded uh, and we did get support from the city and the state but not towards any equipment. And so then we had to find another way to do that yeah. and uh, Secure Bike Share actually is operating the system and has the financial risk for the operations and also finance the equipment so they have the capital risk. So it's an equipment company. It's an operating company. They're an operating company. So there's bike share and then there's the operating company. Yeah. Yeah, bike share and the operating company. Uh, exactly. Now next, just to make things more interesting, yeah, of course. <laughs> the federal government has TAP funds, Transportation Alternative Program funds, uh -huh. and they deliver a certain percentage of those to states. And then the states decide where they're going to put that money. And um, so over the next three years, bike share equipment will come from federal funds. Uh, for That was what will fund expansion. Uh -huh. It's at 80% funding, so we are required to come up with a 20% match. Uh -huh. And so that's where we're going out to the community. Also, we'll probably go to some public sources and uh, to be able to do that. So this is for contributions that are tax deductible contributions and the like? Yes. And yes. from funding from governmental organizations governmental. that would be like grant and aid kind of uh, right. contributions. Right, 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 right. So um, so we talked to everybody uh, about things like that. But we're really, we're really pleased, and, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're really pleased that $5 million from federal TAP funds are targeted towards bike share, more bike share equipment over the next three years. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And that would double the size of the system. You don't need legislation for that. Um, I assume that you can deal on an administrative level for that. We did have some legal, some regulatory hoops to jump, jump through, and we jumped through lots of hoops. <laughs> but you know, what's interesting uh, now is uh, most of, uh, I mean, all of our biggie stops are on city and county and private property. And this next uh, phase is looking at state property also and federal property. I'm learning about, oh, wait, I thought that was city. Oh, no, that's state. Anything with highway on it is state. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, so um, Nimitz Highway, Ala Moana. Yeah. Uh, you're learning something. I hope you're taking <laughs> notes on this. Vineyard. In case you were always confused about yeah. what, what state and what city, and, uh, now you know. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, so anyway, so having conversations with various folks in the state about that, yeah. because to fill in some of these areas, oh, including UH is another entity, and so we've had discussions with them. We're really close to finalizing our ability to put stations up there in our next phase. Well, we would be remiss if we did not discuss safety. Yep. And the reason I say that is, you know, I mean, I'm raised with the notion that the more bikes you have on the road, the safer it is for mm -hmm. any individual Absolutely. cyclist. Uh, and you guys are putting bikes on the road. Yeah. So you're actually affecting, you know, the whole enchilada. You, you're having an effect on the, the possibility, the option of riding bike, whether it's a beaky bike or not a beaky mm -hmm. bike, because you're there. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, can we talk about safety yes, for a moment? absolutely. Okay, so I retired before I took this job. Um, and then I was retired for a couple of years, and I came back to do it. And I didn't do it because bike share was what I wanted to do for that being the end. Uh, my purpose was to make this a safer place to bike. So um, here's, here's how I see it, and what we've seen in other cities is, like you said, more people on bikes creates more awareness among um, people in cars that there's going to be bikes there. When I ride my personal bike, I'm much more comfortable riding where people expect to see bikes. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, the more um, non-bike people, you know, I haven't been on a bike in years, I wouldn't, you know, Right. More of those people that are on a bike, when they get behind the wheel of their car, they're probably going to drive a little bit differently. You bet. 
So that's, that's another thing that's just back to the personal um, interaction of bikes. But then also, the more people that there are on bikes, the more supportive they're going to be of the idea of more bike lanes, more protected bike lanes, more bike paths. Because if you're riding a bike, then you're going to feel safer and you're being more willing to ride. If you're in a car, it's like, get them out of my way. <laughs> right. You know, so I think you have the opportunity then with this, because of the presence of the bike share bikes, of Beaky, um, I think it's, I've seen a lot more other rental bikes out. I've seen a lot more personal bikes out. And I think it gives people the permission to say, oh, if bike share is here, then I can probably ride my own bike. And so that gets that momentum going towards the idea of, let's put in more bike lanes, let's make the, safe, the street safer for pedestrians and bicycles, and slow traffic down and have people be more aware of each other. So it's like this catalyst of, uh, bike share is like a catalyst that can just help move things along. Yeah, it's not only that you're having more riders on the street, but you're affecting the public because they have a greater level of awareness right. about riding and about making the streets safe for riding and about looking for cyclists right. and giving them a wider berth um, and, and not, not tailgating them and all that. Yeah, and that's the safety side. And the other side, I think that's harder for people to see. And I hope that we'll be able to demonstrate that better um, and continue to demonstrate that is congestion and parking. Yeah. Um, we, we all know, I love my car when I can drive it and uh, I can find a place to park easily and all that and I'm not sitting in traffic. I really do not like my car when I need to be somewhere and I can't find a parking place and I'm circling around or I'm sitting no at lights or whatever. It's like, yeah. And um, we can't, we don't have tons of space to create a lot more parking. And do we really, really do we want to tear down paradise and put up a parking lot? You know, go back to an old sign. Can we shift enough people uh, for some of their trips to be made by bike so that it frees up if people need to drive that there's more available parking. That's another thing that we're trying to do is reduce that congestion. Um, I do not make all of every single trip every day by car, but I make a lot fewer, uh, I mean by bike, but I make a lot fewer by car than I used to. Yeah. So it's sort of an interesting and I'm just one example. So what's your, you know, dream? I'm, I might tell you mine. Okay, uh, what, why don't you tell me yours first? <laughs> okay, my, my dream is that, you know, in Honolulu anyway, and to some extent the same exists on the neighbor islands, is you have mountains in the middle and you have a flat perimeter yeah. area. And, you know, the hills are not really overwhelming and, and you can find uh, good terrain to ride. Uh, problem is that the roads are not that good, you know, and they need a little surfacing. Right. And the drivers are not that aware, and the, the bike lanes would really help. And right. some, many places are on it. Um, my dream, okay, is that we recognize all this, we put some money into it, and you reach a tipping point where a huge number of people, including elderly people, mm -hmm. you know, who don't ride bikes, right. but they're afraid if they fall, it's going to be terrible. Um, you know, you find a whole community. And that will change the way this place works. Yeah, it'll change health. It'll change a whole, the pace of life, if you will. Yeah. It'll change, um, you know, sort of state of mind. You know, I look at you and I see somebody who rides a bike all the time. I think, I think it helps you. I mean, physically, mentally, it totally helps it's me. part of your, <laughs> the core of your yeah. life. Yeah. I wish I'd, I, I want to do that too, but. Yeah, we're going to go for a ride. <laughs> okay, we can go for a ride. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I remember my own bike, biking days. Yeah. Uh, I always felt exuber, you know, exhilarated yeah. riding a bike. It was yeah. a, it was a karma thing. It was a. A, a whole lifestyle that that was that was good. Anyway, so my dream is that Honolulu, anyway, and maybe neighbor islands soon enough, mm -hmm. becomes a biking city. How about your dream? I think that would be fantastic. And I think uh, I think about myself getting older, and when I can't drive a car, and you know, when I want to get around and I want to stay in the neighborhood I live in. Thank you very much, and not be shipped off somewhere. Um, and so in that sense then, I think a walkable, bikeable place is the place I want to be. And I've always thought that would be ur an urban place. And I think of other cities that I've gone in and different places I like to go. It's usually not because there's a lot of cars parked there or cars in the street. It usually has to do with these walking streets, with, little, with shops and, you know, it's just enjoying outside and it feels clean and it just feels nice. And I think that getting people out of their cars sometimes and out to appreciate what we have here would help that along too. It's just um, it's just amazing. I love to I love to ride a bike in that sense because I get to experience our neighborhoods, 
and I don't really experience them in a car. I'm in this little bubble. Oh, it's true. And um, when you're outside, somebody was just telling me this morning, I took a... I took a group of people that I do exercise in the morning at Magic Island, and we're all in our 60s and 70s. And I took them for their, very, for their first Beaky ride on Friday. And um, we had a great time. We, just, I, we stayed off of main roads and went and had coffee in Kaka'ako and came back. And then this morning, uh, one of the women, they had a great, we all had a great time. Um, and then this morning, one of them uh, came up to me and said, you know, this week, this, I was just at, over at the library at Ala Moana, and I thought I could drive to so-and-so, or my husband said, I'll take you. And he, she says, no, I'm going to take Beaky. And so she did it. She had a great experience. And she said during that time when she was on her ride, all the other Beaky riders were, like, waving at each other. And it's like, it's just sort of nice. It starts building a this connection of, with people. It's uh, infectious. Yeah. So, <laughs> so those kind of things, I, I, you know, there's the hard benefit, you know, the really quantifiable benefits. And then there's the benefits that are a little bit softer. And I think that our ability to connect people together again and have them just be, you know, experience other people, maybe that will help us in some of the communications that we have right. and make us pull us together a little bit. Yeah. As a community. Yeah. What a beautiful dream. Yeah. I hope all of our dreams come true in this way. I do too. Thank you, Lori. Thank Thanks you. for coming down. We've got to do this again. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Aloha. Aloha.